Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful drawing community. In this video, we are going to learn how to format Procreate files for print and also how to format a full book in Procreate. And I divided the video in chapters so you can select one section that you want to watch if you don't want to watch the whole video. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, so let's say we're looking at a page, and let's also say that on this page we've drawn two characters. Now that's really nice, but you can't exactly just send it like that to the printer. As designers and as illustrators, we have things that we absolutely need to know and keep in mind whenever we're creating something that is meant to be printed. So let's look at this page a little bit closer. The first thing you need to be aware of when preparing a file for print or an illustration for print is the margin. And think of the margin as a safety zone that protects your main content from the edge of the page. And there are a few reasons why we have a margin. The first one is purely aesthetic, it just looks better when you have some breathing room around your main content. But there's also a more technical reason. If you've ever tried to print, for example, a picture at home and have it full page, you're, you probably notice that there's always this white border on the edges. And the reason for that is the big majority of printers just cannot print right up to the edge of your paper. So if you don't include margin, you're gonna risk losing some important visual elements like text or faces and things like that. But what happens if we want to have a background behind our characters and we also don't want to have a white border around the page? Well, that's when the concept of bleed comes in. So whenever you want your final printed product to have color right up to the edges of the paper, you need to actually print on a bigger sheet and then trim that sheet. So bleed is just what we call this extra area of image that ends up being trimmed at the end. And that brings us to the third reason why you absolutely need a margin. When your projects are being printed in large volumes, they're also being trimmed at large volumes all at the same time. So it's like a big stack of paper that is being cut with massive blades. So the cut is not necessarily going to be exactly the same place from one page to the other, which is why if you have text that goes outside of your margin, then you risk maybe losing it at the trimming phase. The size you need to set your bleed and your margin at depends on your project. Usually your printer or the print on demand service that you use will have guidelines. If you cannot find any information, I find that in general the rule of thumb is at least half an inch for the margin and at least a one eighth of an inch for the bleed, so 0.125 inches. There is one thing to keep in mind though. If you're working on a book, it means you're probably going to have two pages come together to create a spread. And once the book is printed and assembled, you lose a little area in the middle where the two pages connect. And this area is called the gutter. And the gutter, you can think of it as just bigger margins, basically, because this is another safety area in which you don't want to have any text or important information because it might just get lost in the fold of the book. And this brings us to the subject of book layout and how to take pages and turn them into spreads. The most important thing to know is that you need a number of page that is a multiple of four. And the reason behind that is when books are printed, they're printed in spreads, so two pages put together as opposed to separate individual pages. So the printer is going to print one spread on the one side of the paper, another spread on the other side, and then fold the paper in half. So you end up with two spreads per sheet of paper, and that means four pages per sheet of paper. And the cover is very rarely included in the inside pages, it's usually a separate document. And the cover is also four pages, and those pages all have specific names. So the front cover is called C1, and then the back cover is called C4. If you open your book, the page that is right on the other side of the front cover is called C2, and if you go to the end of the book, the page that is right on the other side of your back cover is called C3. If you were to do the book layout in a design software like InDesign, this is kind of the layout you would see. So you would have one file with the cover, and then another file with the inside pages. 
And notice here that the first inside page is a single right page. I know this might sound weird, but if you don't trust me, just open a book and you're gonna notice that's pretty much how it works. So basically all it is is this page extends to the back, which creates a single left page at the end. So let's jump into Procreate to look at how these things come together in real life. So what I personally did is I went ahead in Photoshop and created a bunch of templates using the most common children's book sizes. And then I just imported those templates into Procreate. So you can see here, for example, I have 8.5 by 8.5. I have it as a spread, as a left page, and as a right page. So let's say we click on one just so we can see what's inside. There's basically all the guides that we know and that we've looked at early in the video. So we have the labels on a specific layer that you can just hide and the guides on another layer that you can also hide and then this layer where you can place your art or draw your art. And at first I made these templates for myself because it's just way easier for me whenever I illustrate children's books to have them handy. But I also recently just made them available in my ultimate illustration bundle. So if you want to check them out, if you don't want to mess with the technique and I'm going to show you in the next step on how to kind of make similar templates in Procreate, you can definitely check these out. They will be linked in the description below as usual, along with a special promo code for the YouTube people. And you can see all the most common sizes are included. That being said, let's look at how you can create a basic template for yourself in Procreate. It's definitely not going to be as precise as Photoshop, but you know, it, it's better than nothing. So for this example, I'm going to go with the 8.5 by 8.5 single page. So start by creating a custom canvas right here. And one thing that is really important to know, if you're printing 99.9999% of the time, you need to set your color profile to CMY key as opposed to RGB. And I'm not gonna start talking about color profiles in this video, it's just too much. But just keep in mind that for print, you usually use CMY key and for screen, you usually use RGB. Once that's set up, you can go back to the dimension menu and you're going to select inches. You also want to make sure that the DPI is set to 300. Now, we're gonna create a canvas that is the size of basically inside the margin. So I know it sounds weird, but bear with me here. So let's say we want a margin of half an inch. Well, we're gonna have to subtract a whole inch on the width and the height of our final piece to get the uh, save zone, basically. So here, since our final piece is 8.5, we're gonna have 7.5. So once you have your dimensions, just go ahead and click on create, which is going to open up the canvas on your screen. So the first thing to do is just to find any color that is fairly light that you like, it doesn't matter, and then fill in one layer with it. We're then gonna go in this wrench menu icon here at the top, select canvas and select crop and resize. You're then gonna go in the settings and you're going to make sure that resemble and snapping are both deactivated. You're then gonna go in the measurement at the top and input the trim size, so the final size you want your artwork to be. So we said 8.5 by 8.5. And then you're just going to click done. So now we have the square that is exactly the size of the save zone in which we can draw and create, but it's kind of in a weird position. So just go ahead and select the layer and then select the arrow tool and enable snapping. So now whenever you move the shape, you're going to see some guides and that's going to allow you to place it right in the center of your canvas. So now we have this beautiful half an inch margin all around our canvas. I really recommend that you go ahead and create a new layer on top of that, rename this layer margin so that you can actually just kind of draw the outline of the margin itself instead of having this big <laughs> rectangle of color. So just pick a darker color and any brush that is, you know, fairly precise, and then you can outline your rectangle or square that way. And when you're done, you can then go back in your layers and either hide the original rectangle or even delete the layer because we really don't need it that much. So yeah, now you just have your margin lines. Okay, now let's add the bleed. So creating a new layer with any other color of your choice, we're going to fill that layer in again. And going back in the crop and resize option, in the settings, we're kind of going to do a similar technique. So if we go with a bleed of an eight of an inch all around, that means we're adding a quarter of an inch to the width and a quarter of the inch to the height. So go ahead, adjust your measurements and then click done. 
This time we're going to need to select both the margins layer and this new color layer. And going back with our arrow tool, we can just center them both. And just like we did for the margin, you can go ahead and create a new layer on top of everything. This time you would rename it to bleed. And with a darker color and again a precise brush, you can just go in and outline this new square or rectangle that you created. So this is definitely kind of a <laughs> twisted technique to get the guides, but since there are no rulers in Procreate, it's pretty much the only way to do it, or at least the only way that I found. And yeah, you would just have to draw right up to the edge of your canvas, making sure that your main content is staying inside the inner square or rectangle. And you can definitely go ahead at this point and delete the color layers. And although this technique is really helpful, it is not perfect because you can see both sides have the same margin and both sides have bleed, which is not really what you need if you're drawing a book spread. You would need, you know, the gutter and one side wouldn't have the bleed. So if we go and look at one of my Photoshop templates, we can notice that one side, yeah, there is a bigger margin that is basically when two pages come together, uh, you lose the bleed and you just get the gutter like we talked about earlier. So there's really no way of getting that precise and procreate again because there are no rulers. But creating a template with the cheat way I showed you is definitely much better than not even considering margins and bleed. So the last thing we have to look at is how to take all your spreads and combine them and export them into one neat PDF for the printer. If you're like me, you're probably drawing all your spreads in separate canvases, or at least that's what I would recommend. So personally what I do, I just take one of my template and then duplicate it a bunch of times and then that's where I draw <laughs> my spreads and my pages. And when I'm ready to export, I just go ahead and duplicate once more a single page template. And this one you would rename to PDF or the name of the book or something like that. In my case, I just went with PDF demo. And in this PDF, we're going to include all of our pages as separate layers. Now, depending on the printing service that you're using, your printer might want to have all your pages as spread or all your pages as individual pages. Here, I'm just going to show you how to do it for individual pages because that's what most print on demand services ask for. So that's probably what you're gonna have to do anyway. So here it's really easy. You just need to go back and copy all your different pages. So the first one should be a single right page and it should be your title page for your book. Make sure all your guides are hidden and only the content you want to print is visible. Now you're going to select the wrench icon menu, select the add option and copy canvas. You're then going to go back to your gallery and to your big PDF file. And in this one, you're also going to hide the guides and everything. And you're just going to go and again, back in the wrench icon menu, select paste this time. And that's going to paste your title page. Make sure that you rename this page to one, otherwise it's gonna get really confusing, believe me. So once you have that, we're going to go back to our gallery to select the next page or the next spread. So your page number two should kind of be a spread with page number three. Usually that's what happens. So my example here is located in the spread template. So I just hide the guides again and then select copy canvas. Going back to the gallery. This time we have to be really careful about a few things. So going back to your main PDF layer, you're going to click paste. And you're going to see it's going to paste your spread kind of in the center of the page, which is obviously not what we want. So without exiting the arrow tool, make sure you have the tool set again to snapping and to uniform. And then you're going to stretch your artwork so that the left side covers the entire page. Now be careful here because everything that goes outside of the canvas of Procreate when you uncheck the uh, arrow tool is going to be deleted automatically. So you'd have to start again. But once everything is placed exactly where you want it to be, go ahead and exit the arrow tool and then rename this new layer to two. Since we're working with a spread this time, we can just go back and paste what we already have copied. And this time we're just going to fill in the page with the right side of the artwork. And again, once everything is exactly where you want it to be, just go ahead and tap on the arrow tool to exit it. And then make sure that you rename this layer to three. And you're going to repeat this technique with all your pages and all your spreads until you're left to the last page, which should be a single 
left page. So for that, just go ahead and create a new layer and fill it in with white. You're then going to rename it to whichever the final number is. So in my case, it's going to be four. And make sure that you also hide the background color. So the white Procreate is going to export your file as a PDF is every single layer is going to become a separate page. And it is a little bit weird, but the lowest layer in your layer panel is actually going to be the first page. And inversely, the highest layer in your layer panel is going to be the last page. So make sure you keep that in mind. And in your wrench menu, go ahead and select share. Then you're gonna select PDF, not in the top section here, but in the share layer section. You're then gonna click on the best. And once it's ready, you can just select save to files here. And then you're going to be able to just click on my iPad and then save. So it's going to be saved in your files on your iPad. So let's go try to find it. If we leave Procreate, you have this file app here, which is just this blue folder icon. And if you go and try to find your file here, I can see PDF demo. If we click on it, it's going to open the PDF and you can see we have all our layers set as pages and we don't see it because we don't have the guides, but the pages have the proper bleed measurements for printing. So there you go. This is all you need to know if you want to format files for print in Procreate. And if you've watched the video this far, please go ahead and comment the word margin below. And while you're there, go ahead and give this video a like because it really does help the channel. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week. I'll see you soon.